Stop flinching by reducing the recoil and sound of your firearm. Shoot a load with low enough recoil and sound so that you do not flinch. When you have stopped flinching, then slowly increase the load, taking time to get acclimated to each more powerful load. If you again start flinching, then change to a lighter load with less recoil. You may have to shoot a 22 long rifle firearm in order to stop flinching. I recommend using earplugs and earmuffs because used together there is less sound than either one alone. A longer barrel will give less sound because as the bullet is pushed through a longer barrel the gas pressure is decreasing so when the bullet exits the barrel the gas pressure is less and the sound is less. A heavier firearm gives less recoil. This is how to load the lightest recoiling load which functions the action of your firearm. Less recoil makes it easier to shoot without flinching. This is the Hodgson website. I scroll down and click on Reloading Data Center. I scroll down and click on Pistol. I'm going to select a 9mm Luger cartridge. A lighter bullet weight gives less recoil. I'm going to select a 125 grain bullet. Any manufacturer and all powders so I select all and then click on get data. That returned 38 loads. I'm going to select a lead bullet. I'm looking at the starting loads to find which starting load gives the lowest velocity. There are two of them, 700X and Clay's. I'm going to choose the faster burn rate powder because we're going to load a very light load. So I go to the burn rate chart and see that Clay's is number 10 and 700X is number 12. So I choose Clay's because that it's a faster burn rate powder because this chart is listed from fastest to slowest. So my load will be a 125 grain lead bullet, 2.9 grains of clays, and a 9 millimeter Luger cartridge case. My starting load is a 125 grain lead bullet 2.9 grains of clays in a 9mm Luger cartridge. Then I load down in two tenths of a grain increment. I'm going to load down to 1.1 grains of clays. And I hope in that range I'll find loads that do not function. And then I will want a load with more powder than the load that does not function. Here I'm loading 2.9 grains of clays.
I've loaded from 2.9 grains to 1.3 grains. Now I'm going to load 1.1 grain of clays. Now I'm ready to test these at the gun range. I'm going to start shooting my loads at 2.9 grains and then go down 2.7 and so on to find which load does not function the action. I have the cartridges in my magazine starting at 2.9, 2.7 and so on down. Each time I fire I want to make sure that the bullet comes out of the barrel, hits the steel plate. If it doesn't hit the steel plate or if, it, if I don't think it came out of the barrel then I'll stop shooting and check if the bullet is stuck in the barrel. Point nine grit. That functioned the action fine. Two point seven grit. Two point five grit. Now that one didn't lock the slide back, so that looks like too light a load if it won't, if it doesn't have enough power to lock the slide back. That was 2.5 grit. 2.3 grit. That didn't get the case out of the firearm. That had a smokestack jam, so that's looking too light. That was 2.3 grains, is looking too light. So I think that case never got out of the chamber. Yes. That one didn't get out. Neither did that one. Okay, so that was the fifth load. One, two, three, four, five. Two point one is is definitely too little. Two point three is uh Is, is too little. So what I need to do is pick a load here that functioned the action properly and in fact had enough power to lock the slide back and choose that load and load 50 of them and then come out here and test them because a three shot sample is so small that it's not a reliable sample. So, whichever load that I choose, I need to shoot more of them to see if it's reliable, and if it's not, then of course I need to pick a load that has more powder. It's unlikely, but it's possible that one of these loads could stick a bullet in the barrel. If that happens, you need to check whether or not barrel is clear. I'll demonstrate that.
Now that bullet got out the barrel and hit the steel plate. But if I wasn't sure, I'd have to check. And the way to do that is to remove the magazine, lock the action open, and use a rod to check whether or not the bullet got out. Now that bullet got out the barrel, but it's, it's an unlikely possibility that a bullet stick in the barrel with these loads. You might have to check. It's unlikely these loads would ever stick a bullet in the barrel. Let me show you the proper procedure if that occurs. This is a cartridge with no powder. So that bullet didn't get out the barrel, it didn't hit the steel plate, and I'll confirm that by checking if the bore is clear. If the bore is not clear, there's a bullet in the barrel. When a bullet sticks in the barrel, it can be driven out with a squib rod. I suggest driving it the shortest distance. I have tape on my squib rod to make sure it stays in the center of the bore and does not hit the rifling and damaging it. So I'll just pound it against the ground. And there it is. Bullet that's stuck in the barrel. If I have a bullet stuck in the barrel of my firearm, Another way to take it out is fill the bore with water, I have a blank cartridge with a paraffin wax wad and one grain of trail boss powder. The bullet was shot out of the barrel. Don't try that until you've watched my vi video how to shoot out a bullet stuck in the barrel of a firearm. loads I did not shoot, I'll pull the bullets, I choose the load 2.7 grains of clays. Now I'm going to load 50 cartridges. Now I finish loading the 50 cartridges. I now have my 50 cartridges loaded with the lightest load that function the action properly, including locking back the slide. 
So now I'm ready to shoot the 50 rounds. And as long as I'm going to do that, I might as well get some practice. Okay, that was all 50 cartridges, no malfunctions, slide locked open, looks like this is the load I should use, lightest recoil and load for this powder and bullet and this, and this firearm, so I need to sight in for this load, and, and of course I'm assuming this load is light enough in recoil so that I'm not flinching. If it's not, then I could use a lighter bullet or I could even put in a weaker recoil spring and go through the process again of finding what load is the lightest load that will function the firearm.